acknowledge the truth of your scripture that Paul said, the Old Testament with all the illustrations, all the history was certainly uh, illustrations concerning the truth today. And, and he spoke of that rock that followed them was Christ. And we know the, which is Messiah. We know that God was their deliverer. God was their Messiah. <coughs> And he was the pillar of fire to keep them warm by night, and he was the cloud by day to keep them cool. And he brought the man, and we know the strange thing about it all is they were happy with the water. They liked the heat at night in the cold desert, and they liked the cloud in the day when the desert was so hot and so dry, but a lot of them didn't like the manna, the heavenly food. And we know even Jesus was tempted to turn these stones into bread. And and he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And today we find the same thing, Lord, the people crossing over, mixed multitude. And we pray, Lord, that not one of us here tonight shall find the bread, the man I've sent down from heaven, the word of God, the truth given us in this last day, you yourself being here doing it, shall be unpalatable, but shall be sweet and spiritual food in due season which is marvelous and wonderful to us and this is all we dearly want even as david wanted it me our souls also cry for that word tonight and help us to receive it in the simplicity and the power and the vindication which was given in jesus name we pray amen you may be seated now we're on to number two of end time seed sign and Last Sunday, we saw Brother Branham take Amos 3 and 7 as a text wherein it is said that surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Now, since Brother Branham has said concerning himself that he will plant or sow the, in, the seed of the entire Bible from the serpent in the garden to the prophet in the former reign, <clears throat> he will continue to teach all that the Lord reveals to him concerning what we need to know in this hour of the restored word. And this teaching will not only be what God has hidden under the seven seals, but what is actually hidden of the revealed word which was already revealed in the first century, but it has been hidden and lost because of the creeds and the dogmas that have crept in. Something like the time that Israel went back and began going through the temple. And to their great surprise and consternation, they found the word of God all written out there. And it was so grossly neglected that they did not even know that word and they had to have the word retaught. And you better believe it wasn't retaught the way it was given in the beginning. And then when Jesus came <clears throat> with the conclusiveness of the absolute vindication, which no one else ever had, that great prophet, they still turned it down and crucified him. Very strange, but we have the same cycle completed again, its final stages. Now we notice that Brother Brown spoke very plainly against evolution, which is human reasoning based on justified techniques of uncertain analysis and synthesis. By himself going directly to nature coupled with scripture, which is exactly what all men should do and leave the secrets of God concerning creation and its maintenance and whatever God wants to do with it to a prophet and go on in the revealed faith. Now that is what we should be doing. That should be in our schools. It is not there. On page 13, Brother Branham has just set forth the resurrection <clears throat> of which Job spoke and tied it into the example of a deciduous tree that sheds its leaves when the sap begins to go to the roots and lays dormant all winter, but in spring, along with the seeds of the fall on the ground, come back to life again. Then like Job, who was a prophet, Brother Branham the prophet, even Elijah the prophet, begins to tell us of God in nature and truth, as he exemplifies it in his own life and ministry. 
And he tells us this in this sermon preached in Tifton, Georgia. And he now is about to embark upon the story of his dealing with an infidel who came to God through a proper understanding of nature which the man did not have, showing that we can, that is the elect, the seed, will understand by nature that there is a God and you can see his continuity, you can see the purpose and plan of God and his continuity, but of course it does not give you the real true revelation. That itself is when God reveals his own thinking concerning himself and that thinking is through a word process of vindication by a prophet. <clears throat> now speaking of the resurrection, exemplified in nature by the deciduous tree and other trees also, even the pine trees, the sap goes down to the roots. On page 13, Brother Branham with paragraph 52 says, and, and Christians are hanging on the tree of life, like little leaves, you know, hanging on. And when the life, le when the life leaves this old sinful body, little leaves drop off, it goes back to the God that gives it to come forth again with a new body because it's serving a purpose. Now you'll notice in there that the purpose of God is served through bodies. Many people would like to have different ideas. They can't even uh, coordinate their thinking with God's thinking on the ground that you are people. Some want us to come back as angels. And then some don't even want a resurrection. Uh, they want everything but the Word of God. And yet, you will find <clears throat> that the way they spoke their doctrines concerning God is something like when the firemen undo the hydrant and it just blasts out compared to the true Christian who's got a little water sprinkler. See, I'd sooner have my faith 100% and a little sprinkle of truth than a ride of unbelief. And you know, the greatest lie in the world is 99% true. Brother Branham did say the latter rain people claim the closest. And when you're the closest, you're the furthest. Because that's the way it is. Now, in paragraph 53, Brother Branham is going to illustrate about this marvelous uh, conversion of this old infidel. Here some time ago, I was down in the state of Kentucky, or I suppose from here directly, or directionally, I'd have to point north up in the state of Kentucky. I was hunting. I and Mr. Woods, one of the trustees here with us tonight. <clears throat> now, some years back, I'd had a meeting over in a little city called Acton at the Methodist campground. In there one night, we were speaking, and the Lord was doing great things, and we were having a healing service, praying for the sick. And now you who are all at the other meetings, you know what takes place in those meetings. And of course, he's talking about discernment. Now, he throws an inter interpolation in here, so it doesn't matter, we're going to read it. Now, I cannot heal, nor can any other man. God's already done it. You just have to believe it. So he has a way that he promised in the last days, a gift that would discern the spirits and so forth, that works. We know that it's 100% because it's God's Word making manifest His promise for this last day. Now, <clears throat> of course, what we're looking back over here is, I would believe, Acts, the 17th chapter, and verse 31, uh, where Paul is speaking after Mars Hill, and he said, Because God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And uh, also, <clears throat> over in Romans, the uh, second chapter, Paul speaking again, in verse 16, he says, In that day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to to my gospel. <clears throat> and in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse, just putting these all together, and it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp with any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing asunder soul and spirit, and, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, you notice that was in Jesus. <clears throat> that is actually the Spirit of God doing this 
And remember everything that Jesus did, he declared by vision, by revelation, and by the power of God performing what was said. And you'll notice now, at the, and you'll notice what is said here, that at the end time, God was going to judge the world by one Christ Jesus. God was going to judge the world by Paul's gospel. And at that time, said the word of God is quick and powerful, sharp and twitch, sword, piercing and dying, under soul and spirit. And of the joints of marriage, discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open are the eyes that with him and whom he have to do. Now you notice what I'm bringing together here is the thought that this is what we are seeing at the end time because discernment means to, to judge between. And you're seeing how that judging was done on one hand to prove the other hand, which means if you have a pair of scales here and one balances the other, and A and B are standing perfectly equated, so there's no movement to the left or right, A is equal to B. <clears throat> so you see here judging the world by one Christ Jesus, judging the world by the gospel, proving the discernment so the hearts of men are open, like with Jesus and with Paul and with William Branham, showing exactly where you are at in this particular hour. Now, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now, that is the judge. That is the judge putting the church in order. See? So don't, don't forget that now. And remember, there cannot be a judge without a prophet. Uh-uh. Ooh, no, 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 no. There never can be a judge without a prophet because the prophet alone brings the word of the living God by vindication that this is right, whatever that right is, whatever the word is. And you saw that with Moses. When Moses gave the law from God, a man must not labor on Saturday. That's the Sabbath. <clears throat> Call it whichever day. Who cares? It's the last day anyway. And uh, that, that seventh day, the sixth day, you go out and work. But the seventh day was consecrated to God. So they caught a man out there gathering sticks. Now, right, even though the word had distinctly positively said that person would have to die. Now, these people were tender-hearted. And I don't blame them being tender-hearted. <clears throat> but what they did, they said, now, this man's out there, and I don't know that he really meant any harm. I don't know if he really understood. I, you know, they maybe went back and forth. And they said, now, what should we do with this man? So they said, let's put him in quarantine. Put him in jail. And they said, now, let's find out from God what the answer is. And you know, when, when Moses went back to God, the answer was the same. Put him to death. Now, the Bible said, Whosoever sheddeth man's blood by, his, by man's hand shall his blood be shed. And you've got the world full of killers, and nobody's going to kill anybody. Nobody's going to exact the death penalty. Oh, cruel and unusual punishment. What about the victim? <clears throat> but I want you to show you something here. Without the prophet, there isn't any of this. You say, well, just a minute. I'm, I'm thinking of, of Jesus, the great one. Hold it. He was the prophet, and he cannot change. <clears throat> you say, just a minute now. I don't know that. He's the, he is the high priest. I'm going to tell you something. No high priest can get off of his chair. No high priest can sit down. No high priest can do anything unless there's a prophet there to tell him what to do. You talk about Jesus all you want. Let me tell you something. He's my mediator. He, oh, yes, he's the high priest. He's my intercessor. Hold it, buddy, hold it. There's not one mediation can he do or accomplish and not one intercession outside of a prophet. Hey! Go back to Aaron and Moses. Hmm? Brother Branham said he went off the mercy seat, took the book out of the Father's hand, ripped off the seal, handed it back, and climbed the Father's throne. You show me he can do that without a prophet. You show me anything without this word. 
Yet the church is its own prophet. The church, I heard some nice men talking the other day in the office when I was getting this vitamin C, heavy concentration in intravenous to see if it take away the pain in my back. Hasn't done anything too much yet, if anything at all. And I didn't interrupt their conversation, but he was saying, all you got to do is pray. All you got to do is pray. Bless God, pray. Um, I could have said, sir, why didn't Moses go down and pray for Pharaoh? The man didn't have a clue. If you gave him the truth, he'd stand there appalled and stunned. What is with this guy? Who is this idiot? And yet I'm preaching the vindicated message. So, all right. <clears throat> Strange. All Christians are hanging to the tree of life. We're just waiting now for the resurrection. Now, he was down there in Acton. And uh, he was talking about the fact that he was discerning. And the discernment was 100% correct. Now, William Branham, as a prophet, did not have the right to discern unless God led him. He did not have the right to prophesy or predicate unless God told him. Every single thing was by God, who is the intelligence <clears throat> of the prophet, and therefore our intelligence. Now he was there, and he has this gift, where spirits are discerned, men's hearts are open. So he said, all right, I was down there in Acton, having this meeting where the sick were being prayed for, and it was a great healing service. Now I want you to know, he said, I can't heal, nor can any other man heal. First of all, God's already done it. So why would I be doing any healing if God's already done it? I could just notify you. All you got to do is believe it. See, <clears throat> now he said, I'd never been in that country before. And there was a woman sitting back in the audience, and the Holy Spirit got among the people and began to call this one, that one, telling them their troubles or so on and so forth. It was our Lord Jesus Christ, his word made manifest in the body of the church. <clears throat> now, you know, absolutely, Brother Branham said, it was the same pillar of fire that was down here revealing the word that brought it to Paul. But remember this, without vindication, you cannot say it was that pillar of fire. There's no way that Paul could come back and say, Jehovah, Savior, spoke to me, and this is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the truth of God, whether you believe it or not, though it's in Scripture, hard to understand, veiled within it. He's speaking of his son. No, they, they weren't able to take that. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham is teaching the very same thing. The Lord descending with the shout, the judge at the head of the church, discerning to prove it. And what he's doing, he's making himself manifest in the flesh of the body, which is the church. And as Brother Branham said, if the hand does it, then the body does it. And that is true. Now, it says, then when he began to speak, he's talking now about Jesus back 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood on the grounds knowing the thoughts of their hearts, and he spoke to them and told the people different things, as you believers or the readers of the Bible well know. Now, he's promised the same thing to again to repeat in the last days, promised it by Scripture. It would be so. Now, that, brother and sister, is a stinger. <clears throat> I don't believe there's a theologian under God's earth can go to the Scripture and actually find that, what Daddy Bosworth knew by the Holy Spirit telling him. He said, there is the ministry. He said, I prayed for 40 years, Brother Bill, back in 1953 in December. I prayed for 40 years for the ministry of Christ to return to this earth, and there it is in that man. Number one, what gave him the authority? Well, Brother Vail, it was a wonderful thing that that man had that great idea. Well, listen, I've got great ideas, too, and God doesn't do anything about mine. You've had great ideas, too. What's God ever done about him? Nothing. What's he going to do about him? Nothing. Brother Bosworth's great idea isn't worth a tiddlywink. In fact, if he dares to impinge upon the gospel of God, the revealed word, with his idea, he is a reprobate or he's some kind of an idiot that God will correct and bring to time. He's got nothing in the first place. The revelation was there because it's in the Bible. And it takes a prophet to show you exactly what it is, which is in Matthew 4 and in Matthew 12. 
<clears throat> make no mistake about it. And as we read Matthew 12 so many times, you know there's, there's no way you can get around it. No way at all. It's a Jesus Christ in the form of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you say, well, just a minute. Don't just a minute me. The point is you've got to go back to where Jesus, the body, was simply flesh. And it was only what the Father told him that he could tell, and what the Father did in him is what could be done. Then it's that one that was in him is here now. But you've got to identify with humanity because that's what God's identified with, not a bunch of angels. <clears throat> They're merely creations that live by his divine grace. We live by the fact we are a part of God. Original seed's got to come back to what it was. Now, <clears throat> promise to the last day. Now, I want you to notice. Now, when that was taking place way back in the back, a lady was weeping somewhere in the big campground. Many, many hundreds and hundreds of people were seated, and there was a lady crying. Notice the Holy Spirit went to the lady and said, you're crying about your sister. Her name is such and such. She lives at a certain place. You have a handkerchief in your pocketbook that you put there before leaving home. It's this and this kind of a handkerchief. You take that handkerchief and go lay it on your sister. She's dying with cancer. Thus saith the Lord, she shall live. The woman took from the building and went and laid her handkerchief on the lady that night. Next morning, she was well. All right. I was now back in that same part of, the, of Kentucky hunting squirrels, and the season was very hot. As many of my fellow squirrel hunters know, the crackling of the leaves <coughs> scares the squirrels, and it was so dry that we had to go to some place where there were some hollows uh, that we could get into, like little ditches to walk through the woods where the leaves weren't so dry as to crackle underfoot and scare the squirrels. Now, my friend's name was Mr. Woods. He's sitting over here to my right. And he said, I know a man that's got a ground with many acres. But he said, he's hard to deal with. He said, he's an infidel. He doesn't believe in God. He makes fun of it. But he knows me and he knows my father. And if I go and ask him, maybe we can hunt on his place. I said, let's go. We drove way back in the country, way back on the side road, and two old men were sitting under the shade of an apple tree, and he said, there he is, the one on the right. Well, I said, well, being, being a minister, I guess I just better sit here in the car. So he goes out and he said, how do you do? And <clears throat> the man said, come on up and sit down. He said, my name is Woods. I wonder if you'd care if we hunted a while on your place. Well, he said, uh, what woods are you? He said, I'm Jim Woods' son. Well, he said, Jim Woods is a friend of mine. And any one of his children can hunt anywhere they want to. He said, thank you. He said, I wonder now which one are you? He said, I'm Banks. He talked to him a few moments, and Mr. Wood said, I wonder if it would be all right for me to take my pastor with us. He said, you don't mean you got so low down till you got to carry a preacher with you wherever you go? He said, my pastor's out there. <clears throat> I thought then I'd better get out of the car. So I got out of the car and walked over, and I said, how do you do? He said, how do you do? So you're a preacher. I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, I'm supposed to be an infidel. I said, well, uh, not much to brag about, is it? He said, no, I guess it isn't. <clears throat> he said, uh, what I've got, uh, what I got against you people, you preachers, you're talking about something you don't know about. He, that's where Brother Brand said, he, the guy said, you're barking up the wrong tree. You know, you're supposed to be a possum up there, and there's no possum up there, so he the dog's barking, you know, about something that's not even there. <clears throat> so this is not quite the same as he said it another time, but it's the same gist. Uh, oh, I said, is that so? He said, yes, sir, I hear them always blowing off about this, about God and everything. There is no such thing. I said, uh-huh. Well, of course, you know how it is, sir. I said, every one of his own thought. I was thinking in my heart, now, Lord, you give me something to help that man, because no doubt he's sincere. And he said, I only heard of one preacher in all my life, and I'd like to hear him. I said, who is that, sir? He said, well, here about two years ago, there was a preacher over here in a town called Acton. An old lady so-and-so up here in the hill had been laying there for two years with cancer. Me and my wife used to help her. They couldn't put her on the bedpan anymore. They had to use a draw sheet. <clears throat> and um, we were up there that morning, he said, and the doctor said the day before she wouldn't make it through the night. She had cancer in her stomach. She's all eaten up. She couldn't even drink barley water and hadn't for weeks. They fed, her through they fed her glucose through her veins until her veins were collapsed and said there was nothing could be done for her. He said uh, her sister was sitting over listening to that preacher preach, and that preacher didn't know anybody there, had never been there, and told her who she was and what her sister was and thought about a handkerchief she had and said, put it on that woman. 
And he said, that night I thought they had a Salvation Army up there of all the screaming going on. And next morning we went over <clears throat> to see if she was dead. And said, when we got there, she's up cooking fried apple pies and eating them. That's about as rotten as you can put in your stomach. <laughs> now, she does it, now she goes and does the neighbor's work. I said, what's so strange about that? He said, well, here's what I wanted to know. If I ever see that preacher, I'm going to ask him, what was it told him about that woman and whether she'd be healed? I said, yes, sir. Squirrel blood all over me and dirty whiskers about that long, you know. And I said, I don't look much like a preacher now. Well, he said, looks more human. And I said, yes, sir. <clears throat> so I said, can I have one of those apples? Little yellow jackets were all over them. And he said, yes, pick one up and bit it. And he said, just help yourself. The yellow jackets are eating them up anyway. I said, thank you. I took a bite and I said, that's a fine apple. He said, yep. That old apple tree provided a lot of them for me. And I said, yes, sir. How old is that tree? Oh, about 40 years old. I planted it there just as a switch. I said, uh -huh. that's a sampling little branch cut on. I said, I noticed all the apples are dropping off of it and the leaves are leaving. He said, yep, that's the way she does. I want to ask you a question. He said, yes, sir, go ahead and ask. <clears throat> I said, what causes the defoliation? We haven't had any frost. It's only the middle of August. We won't have any frost till October, maybe November. But here in the middle of August, those leaves are falling off of the tree. What's, what's making those leaves fall off? Uh, why, he said, the sap's leaving it. I said, what if the sap doesn't leave it? Why, the tree would get killed in the wintertime. The germ of life is in the sap. Frost would kill the tree to die. I said, yes, sir. I said, therefore, the sap goes back down into the roots where it's warm, stays there through the winter, then comes back in summer, bringing more leaves and more apples. He said, that's it. I said, I want to ask you something. What intelligence is at work? Now, the tree doesn't have any. What intelligence says to that tree, it's coming wintertime? Get down into the roots and stay there till the spring of the year. I said, put water in the bucket <clears throat> and set it on a post and see if it'll go down when fall of the year comes. Of course, he, he doesn't mean it's going to go through the tin. It's like you can set a bucket up there and you, with holes in the bottom, see? And uh, it won't go down to any roots, you know. He's just saying, it, it, of course, the tree, that would be a piece of the tree that is dead. And we're talking about resurrection, see? <clears throat> so if there's no life there, there's not going to be a resurrection. It's not going to come back. So you put a bucket of water and set a post and see if it'll go down when the fall of the year comes. It won't do it. I said, you have to admit there's some kind of an intelligence that makes that sap leave the tree and go down into the roots. If it doesn't, it dies. It hides a way to protect its life. <clears throat> now, since the tree has no intelligence, there's a law of God that does that. He said, well, I never thought of it just like that. I said, mister, the same intelligence that tells that tree up there for the sap in that tree to go down to the roots, that same intelligence is what told me who that woman was and told her what was going to happen. He said, you're not that preacher. I said, yes, sir. And there he was led to Christ and died a Christian a year later, about 85 years old. Now, this illustration is about original seed word, untampered, does exactly what it's meant to do. <clears throat> and if we have a pure word, it has to come forth in and through the carrier, just like in the apple tree, and bear fruit in its season. And that's the thing. So you can see the perfection of God in nature. He runs in conduit. See, God's all around us. God's everywhere. Now, it doesn't mean pantheism. It just means you can see everywhere that, <coughs> that God is at work. And if we look at nature, we will find him there. Now, there, now after Job had found him in the death, burial, and resurrection of nature, reproduced itself again of its kind. Now, that's what you're looking at. Reproduced itself again of its kind. Then he couldn't understand about another part of nature that embraces man. If a man, he says, lies down giving up the ghost, where is he? Now, see, the tree never sinned. Nature never sinned. <clears throat> man sinned. But being a prophet... He had recourse to God and to his word. Now, you'll notice in here that we're looking at two resurrections. One, the resurrection of the just that has two parts. The first resurrection, which is a resurrection from out from among the dead, as Paul spoke of in Philippians. And we've had one half of it take place at the time of Jesus Christ. The next one is going to happen very shortly. <clears throat> now, in the second resurrection, you know there's going to be a separation even as in the first, because the first separates the wise from the foolish. And in the second, you'll find the second separated from the serpent seed. But you'll notice, according to seed, 
whatever that seed is, has to produce, manifest, and come back in a resurrection. Now remember, though, at the end time, the, the, the tares are bundled, the chaff is burned. <clears throat> so, all right. The seed will harvest according to its origin. And if the origin is from God, you will find exactly what lies in God concerning his own thinking, plans for what lay within him as concerning children. And you will find the serpent seed, they will go according to what the Bible said, to hell which was made for the devil and his angels. Now the Bible in my text said he makes his secrets known to his prophets. And what these illustrates right there, the woman had a secret. The town knew about it, but it was held from Brother Branham. Many people came there, didn't know about her sister dying. Furthermore, they didn't know God's secret, which was to make her better, to give her her life back. So he's saying here he makes his secrets known to his prophets. That's why only a prophet like William Branham has perfect discernment. Many people try. <clears throat> Paul Cain tries it. I know I got nothing against Paul Cain. I love the guy, but he, I'm going to tell you something. The guy can lie like a sidewalk. What he told me years ago when he, when he spilled his guts to me is not what he's telling now in the books. And I could challenge Paul before Almighty God, this Bible open, knowing there's a God in heaven, this word here. Do you realize what I'm doing? I'm getting away with swearing by the word before God. Think it over. Think it over. He wouldn't dare do it unless he's an infidel. What he told me is not going around now. <clears throat> he made a lot of mistakes in discerning. He was no second Branham. There's no such thing as a second Branham. There's a second Adam. That was Jesus. There's the first man, the last man. There's nothing in between. Either sheep or goat, right? There are no sheep, goats. No. This, that life wasn't in there from eternity, from God himself. God's not going to bring out a life that isn't his. Adoption is not where God takes a bunch of goats and turns them into sheep. That's a lot of hogwash. That word adoption means placing, giving the proof to, <clears throat> giving the position to. All right. Now, he makes his secrets known to his prophets. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet. See, the vindication, and being a prophet, we know the story of Job, and being a prophet, and that's Job, we know the story of Job, God finally explained it to Job that the seed of man was imperfect because the mother of man had failed to obey God's word. She tried to mix it with something else, and God's word won't hybridize with anything. That's right. Jesus said when he was here, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain. Why did he refer to the mustard seed? Mustard seed won't hybridize. Is genuine must if it's genuine mustard seed, it will not take breeding from anything. You can't mix it, you see. And he said, otherwise, if you have that much faith, God's word, that won't hybridize to unbelief or question it. Oh, I feel religious. That won't question it, no matter what circumstances and anything else. You don't question God's word, you believe it. You're supposed to believe it. If we would have only believed it, she would have received, and she would have brought forth children right. But before her husband got to her, he found her already defiled like Jehovah did and like Jesus had. There was a defilement in the womb of her thinking. She had accepted a seed of unbelief against God's word because it produced something to her brighter than what she, and she wanted more knowledge. Now the Bible I've read many times warns against questioning. <clears throat> now here's where you get into deep philosophy. And you want to know how, 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 why, 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 instead of the actual vindicated word. Now, here's what, ha here's what it says concerning Moses in chapter 10 of Romans. For the Moses describes a righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Now, remember, <clears throat> living by that law was not as hard as a lot of people think. It's what people did with that law and messed with it. What's so hard to obey the law of God? Go back over and you can find it. What's so hard? There's nothing so difficult about it if a person 
just wants to adjust <clears throat> and walk in that light. And when there was sin, what's so hard about washing pots and pans and sacrificing an animal? And if the blood of an animal could take care of David and what he did, and I'm going to tell you, under the condition that that man was granted from God, he was a pretty sorry spectacle. And Solomon was an outstanding mess. Now, you know, we've talked about that. Now, <clears throat> we realize no law could bring righteousness. Never has and never will. Except the law of God in Christ Jesus, which is what? The rebirth by the Holy Ghost, Romans 8. But now watch here. The man shall live in them. Now, but watch here. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Now notice that started right back with Eve. The devil came and said, well, just a minute now. Do you really believe that if this, you do so and so that you, you're going to die? He said, you won't surely die. <clears throat> right off the bat now. See, the question came. And soon as the question came, sin entered and death by sin. It was all over. See, it doesn't say in your heart. Now, why does it say in your heart? Because you can blab anything with your mouth. And you can be an A1 hypocrite. And I believe a lot of people try to preach this message, and they're A1 hypocrites. They only use it as a new patch on an old garment. They only know that there is nothing out there from the old way, and this can be a great, wonderful money racket or a popularity contest. See? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> They preach it for conscience sake. If someone don't need more conscience, snakes got hips. So where does that lead me? See, all right, who shall descend to heaven? That's to bring Christ down above. Who shall descend to the deep? That's to bring Christ from the dead. Well, what saith it? The word is, in, is nigh thee, even thy mouth, in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, if you have faith, it's got to be right here in the heart, and the mouth will tell it. Now, of our experience here in the last few months with, we, with the renegade situation here, how much faith did those people really have? It was a cover-up for the longest time. Let's just talk about one guy sitting here, and he talked about, went behind my back to talk about tithing. He said, Lee, they was preaching it wrong. Because I dared to tell you from Malachi, there's something wrong somewhere with tithing. But I never said to anybody, this is what Brother Branham teaches. I said, this is my understanding and the plan that I follow. Now, let's go back to Brother Bradham. Now, let's talk about it. We said, I give 10 20% right off the top. No expenses, nothing taken up. <clears throat> I try to follow that literally, and I've been blessed because I've done it, and I don't have fear. That's been taken away by the grace of God. I believe that'll stay that way. All right, Brother Branham said this about giving. Let's get this down flat. Brother Branham had a certain salary per week, and he said he tithed off that salary. And at the end of the week, Whatever money he had left over, he gave it all away. He emptied out so God could fill again. What if that man had $100 that week? And people brought in food and did nice things. And that week, he'd given $10 out of the 100 and at the end of the week, he had $50 left. He gave $60 out of the 100 Where does it leave you sitting here and the man that lied sitting over there? So let me tell you something. Don't try to trump my ace. Because I'll bring you right back to the prophet and make us all look like a bunch of jackasses and fools. Now, where do you stand with your giving, Grace Gospel Church? I'm not here to pluck you. I'm just telling you, don't you talk out of turn until you've been there. You're pretty quiet. You better be. And those that hear my voice, they better be pretty quiet, too. Because you better hear everything and don't fool around. See, I'm not asking you for money. I'm just telling you. You are not living up to your contract with me trying to cut my throat if anybody you're trying to still do with those guys that left. Because they knew the contract and they lied concerning my heart. Because my heart was clear before God and still is. But the second time, first and second, it's over. Now, Brother Bale, you better be full of love. You better be full of smarts, brother, sister. I'm not judging anybody. This word does it. You've learned some things tonight sitting there. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you caught some of them or not. <clears throat> well, 
but let's keep moving. I'm not mad at anybody. Let's get this flat. But hey, look, it tells you right here. Now, if, but what is it? Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And remember, you cannot confess him outside of a revelation of that word. And shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. See, is, no, you can't do without that. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession made of salvation. But listen to me. Where does that heart get its information? Oh, I'm going to be like Edgar Casey, the clairvoyant. And, he, well, he, and he, you know, he couldn't do certain problems. He was stuck, and his father jumped him. The teacher jumped him. He got nowhere. So one night, what he did, he put the book on his chest, and he went to sleep. And next night, he knew what was in the book and how to use it. How about you people? Let me lay the Bible on your chest tonight. Come on. And be Edgar Casey. If you are, it shows you're not a god. You're the devil. Mine. Mine. Then down here, and then out of the abundance, the mouth speaketh. Yeah. How much abundance of God? Be off of that word, and try to take people with you. Well, you're sitting here because you're not that kind. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. <clears throat> 11 to 14. For this command which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven. It was up there to begin with. That thou should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? You know, that's a good question. If there's a God in heaven, he's got some kind of a word, let's get to him. He already got to him. He had Moses. Oh, well, hey, I don't think I like that. You don't? What are you going to do about it? You can't even get the IRS off your back. If you're in a divorce case, you can't get the woman off your neck and vice versa. And you're trying to deal with God, hogwash. You can't even see a microbe or a virus. You get to see the microbe with a high-powered lens, but can you really see a virus? Well, if it's high-powered enough, maybe you can. I guess you can. Yeah. What are you going to do about when you do see it? What are people doing about leukemia? What are we doing about God? Well, God, I, I'm going to tell you, you've got to listen to me. How do you know he's got an arm to twist? He might have several arms, and by the time you're twisting one arm, he just puts both fingers around you and yeah, chokes you. I'm not kidding, it's the truth. So who's going to bring him down? He said this... Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldst say, Who shall go over the sea and bring it to us, <clears throat> that we may hear it and do it? But the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. Now that's concerning seed based upon the proper way to get the revelation. And that man is just as good as Moses or Paul. <clears throat> All you need is a mechanical word. Get down your spirit into your heart. It'll come out of your mouth, and there you are. And you'll be confessing the right thing. You'll be confessing Christ, who is that word. Never disassociate it, because Brother Branham didn't. I know people want to divide this and divide that. Forget it. All right, no matter what circumstances, anything else, don't you question God's word. You believe it. You're supposed to believe it. <clears throat> If Eve would have only believed that she would have received, and she would have brought forth children right, but before her husband got there, he found her already defiled like Jehovah did, like Jesus did. There was a defilement in the womb of her thinking, her mind. She had accepted a seed of unbelief, something against the word, something wrongly explaining, or something wrongly dividing it, because it produced something to her brighter, and she wanted more knowledge. Do you know what her, her epiphany was? Death. We are in the epiphania, Christ's epiphany, the greater works, <clears throat> the manifestation, 
The waiting is the Father's putting all things under his feet. This is it. Light. Immortal. Eternal life in immortal bodies. Not around the corner, brother, sister. We've turned the corner. You say, Brother Bale, you can die. So what? We've turned the corner. And I've turned the corner with it. I can stand here as one assured. I'm going to go to him. Where the prophet is and come back with him. I've not been handed a sentence of death. I've been handed a sentence of life. We preach life. <clears throat> Eve's epiphany brought death. Epiphany today brings the restored, revealed word and the resurrection and every consideration and every condition contingent with it. That's what's the matter today. I'm standing in a school. I was preaching in the schoolhouse. We'd be a bunch of ignorant people if it weren't for education. And education is a part of our civilization. But civilization, education, can come only by Christianity. Christianity is the grassroots of civilization. Absolutely. Civilization came by Christ, certainly. Why? Because it turns the beast. <clears throat> Nature is the one lump toward God to live in that consecrated life, the life of the Word. See? But see what there is today because the churches have left the Word. They have left the study of the Word misdividing it, getting their PhDs and DDs and creeds and false analysis. So the world today has left God, but they're pregnant. And they will bring forth the Antichrist. Now, to disbelieve God's word or mix it with something to have more light can't be done. I see that's an evening. You don't get more light. <clears throat> I don't get more light if I fix the Word. All I try to do is look at the Word, see what Brother Branham said. I know people get a little upset when I preach things like, like say, all right, where does Cyprus come from? You tell me. You answer another question. How come the prostitute has a syphilis that men get to give to others? You don't, find the, you don't find the origin of syphilis in the male. It's in the female every time. As far as I know, I don't know anything record shows different. Where does she get it from? Cells have the power to transmit and transduce. What if your transmission is entirely wrong? Like you take a 220-volt line and you plug in a 110 razor. Whew, burned right up. Gone. Now what if you do vice versa? You put the 220 on to the 110. And pretty soon it burns out. Isn't that right? That's the refrigerators burn out. I don't know very much, but I read a little bit. You apply the same thing to humanity. And that's what Dr. Merkel's all about. That's why I love the guy, especially since he's a Jew and he went to the desert. I'm looking right at life and the second death, brother, sister, today in my books. <clears throat> you say, where did Brother Branham tell you that? He didn't tell me that. He said, when a man goes home, she leaves an imprint on him. And the whore gives the man syphilis. What about the rest? I read in the Bible out of Romans, the first chapter. I can read it again concerning your filthy homosexuals. Everybody's supposed to love, love, love. Why don't you love the man that rapes your daughter? Gave her VD or gonorrhea that can't be cured, then cut her throat. <clears throat> huh? He said, this cause God gave the women to vile, affliction, uh, vile affections. The women changed their, their natural use. Likewise, the men, leaving natural use of women, burned the lust or another, working that which is unseemly, and received in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Huh? Oh, you don't believe God's word? Drop dead. I say it nicely and kindly. Forget it. You don't belong here. You belong with me. Imprint. Circuits. Transmission. Transmitters and transducers. Transmit means to send forth. Transduce means to carry across. Right? Sure, that's what Latin is. Transduce. Transduco, carry across. Transmit. 
<coughs> sin to Christ. Energy. They use energy to kill people. They put them in electric. <laughs> the energy goes in. Yeah. You smell hair burning and flesh burning. I'm not all that crude. I'm just telling you. I don't just clench the nail down. I make sure it's more than clenched down if I can help it. Now to disbelieve God's word or mix it with something that have, may have more light can't be done. You can't mix it. It won't mix. You believe it just the way God wrote it and the way he spoke it. <clears throat> it's not added to or taken away or anything, but believe it that way. What about Israel and their kings? Look what they did. They reaped because they sowed. What's America done? Reaped and sowing. Now what are you and I to do? To constantly reap and constantly sow. You reap by sowing. You can't help reaping and you can't help sowing. Then why not do it right? <clears throat> See? All right. It won't mix, as your brother Branagh said. But remember, it will perfectly come to pass in spite of what men believe and what they do with it. And it's happening right today because we have vindication. Now, Job being a prophet, finally the vision broke through. And then he saw how that God was going to make a way for a man to live again because there would be another spoken word that a virgin would receive. Now, Brother Branham says that. And that's what well, just a minute now. Hold it. How does Brother, why does Brother Branham say that? Now, look here. That's not in the Bible. Well, it is in the Bible. It is in the Bible. I don't care if Job is the oldest book in the Bible. I don't care if it's a... If it's all the book of the Bible almost, as far as antiquity is concerned, Job still had to rest upon what Moses wrote, and therefore he was heir to it, because it must have been, it was already given if Moses wrote it later. I don't worry two bits about antiquity. I think it's a bunch of hogwash myself. <clears throat> the original word was absolutely to control the earth, to get rid of Satan, to demolish him entirely, Bring the kingdom of God on earth, populated with God's own children in the flesh. You know what? And then turned around and said, your seed is going to be the one that has to bring it to pass. <clears throat> so there was a word spoken. Word spoken to a woman. So all right, a prophet knows these things. William Brown, a prophet, can explain them. See? Genesis 3.15 tells you, speaking of Christ, he would come by a woman who would believe. The woman had to believe or she'd never produce it because he didn't believe. Simple as ABC. That's Holy Ghost teaching. Brother Branham taught it. That was Eve first that doubted it, but when the word came to Mary, she never doubted it. She said, Behold a handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. See, she never said, Now I'll wait till I feel life and then I'll go testify. Uh, uh, you wait until I'm positive of it. <clears throat> Let's just read the book of Luke. Brother Branham quotes that so much, and I got thinking tonight before I came out here. Yeah, I'm going to read that out of Luke myself. We're starting at verse 26 in chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her into mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? That's the first question she asked. He said, Now, She's not married to this man yet, that is physically. The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest will overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing to be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. This is the second, sixth month of her that is called barren. For with God being present here, that's the presence of God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Whatever you want. Be it unto me according to thy word, and the angel departed. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham talking in here, she never made certain statements and, and queried. But let's put it this way. 
If this woman had not been totally ordained, she never would have said what she said. Let's face it, come on. She wasn't just some woman, the angels, hey, I'm going to try Mary. And if Mary doesn't work, I'm going to try who? Some other name. I'm going to try this. He knew just where to go. Because that was the one that was ordained. And in her heart, she took it against anybody else's saying and against all mythology. <clears throat> and believe me, it was very, very sticky. Very sticky. For her to just put everything aside and say, I'm the one, I'll take that. But frankly, I don't believe really that her experience, <clears throat> because she was the one ordained to that particular thing, would be any different from any experience of Brother Branham's or yours or mine when it comes face to face with an issue. Either you're seed or you're not seed. And you're ordained to it or you're not. <clears throat> Brother Branham categorically said that Eve was made uh, not inferior, but she was in a position out of the original creation because it wasn't becoming for God to have a son who would fall. And so therefore it's necessary that Eve be as she was. It was also necessary that Mary be as she was because you don't fool, God doesn't fool with his own plan. Let's face it, God does not fool with his own plan. It's not hit and miss. Let's see if I can work this one. Let's see if I can do that one. No, 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 no. Spoken words, original seed, it must bear a harvest. <clears throat> now, that's the way Christians so-called are today. You know, you know, wait till I'm positive. Wait till I begin to get feel better. Wait till I see something happen. Then I'll do it. No, sir. That's not the question you believe at first. But what did Elijah tell the woman he went to with nothing but a handful of meal? He said, make me a cake first, then go start. The miracle will happen after you take God's word first. <clears throat> you begin to believe God's word. Then the miracle takes place on the word because the word is the seed that brings forth the miracle. Go take the word first. The Holy Spirit gives us life like water falling him. Now, right off the bat, you can say, now, just a minute, there's confusion. There isn't any confusion. The word of God is the word of God. And how do you know the word of God? Vindicated. This man, Elijah, was giving her the word that was already vindicated. And she sensed it. So when he brought the word that was vindicated, go and make that first then. She said, all right. She didn't say, I think this, oh boy, you talk about a sharp shooter, this guy. He's trying to chisel me out of my, my little bit of food here and a little bit for my boy. Oh yeah, I know his kind. That's why they write books about Brother Brown and say that he made money. It was a money game. This guy named Paul, a German guy, he was not around Brother Branham like I was. <clears throat> he never, he's a liar. Yeah. Well, I could say something, but I've said it before, that if we both go there, I'll step on his head. He said, I don't feel bad about that. You know why? Brother Branham got a kick out of Baxter saying when he sees Demas, Brother Baxter loved Paul. I, I, I don't say much for the man. I knew him. Didn't know Paul. But when Demas forsook Paul, Baxter said, when I see him, I'm going to punch him in the nose for having left Paul. Well, maybe I could step on their heads too if that Brother Branham thought that wasn't too bad. You know my heart what I'm saying. Come on. Listen, I, I boil inside. I'm going to tell you frankly. I get steamed up. You say, Brother Vale's the wrong kind of st stimulation. How do you know? I don't say it is. I'm just saying, how would you know? <clears throat> so here's what he's saying here. She had to believe that word. How was it the word of God? By vindication. He had the word for that hour. Not that it was a word outside of Moses and another prophet that brought, so, like you might, uh, a refinement and an expansion of the same word as the, as the root began growing into the greater and greater tree, which was the life from the roots. No. 
He was proving the word. He was the one that God sent. He said, Israel, get back to your roots. <clears throat> now, take the word first. The Holy Spirit gives it light, like water falling from heaven. We know that. Water represents the Holy Spirit. As Moses lifted up the brass serpent, the winner, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Why? The perishing people. And when they lifted up the brass serpent, it saved the life of the perishing people. When he smote the rock, and Christ is that rock which was smitten, out of him came waters of life for a perishing people. You must believe it. Act upon it now. So the perishing is over with. See, the people had nothing to do with the smitten rock. All they had was a need. They got water. From this time on, all they had to do is believe for the need to be fulfilled because it was proven. And that's where we are with this consummated, <clears throat> the consummation of the, of the end time and that word that has been revealed upon vindication. Remember now, when Job saw this coming just one, the one that could stand in the breach between the sinner and God and bridge the way, that perfect seed, those seeds, he said, corrupt. I see them go in the ground. His sons come to mourn over him. He perceives it not. He lies there. He never rises. He'll just lie there, rot away, and that's all of it. He never does rise up again because he's an imperfect seed. <clears throat> but when he found out there was one coming who could bring back perfection to the word of God again. Now, there you are. Perfect word brings the ut utmost and the perfect perfection brings it all. Because it was a deviation. See? Now, if we're a derivation of the word, we better be sure that we are of the proper word. Because if we're a derivative, derivative means it's a part of the original, and the original produced it. <clears throat> In other words, seed from the original seed. God is the original seed. Let's face it. Go on and go back to beginnings. He's got a lot of little seeds, which are his children. You and I are part of it tonight. Now, <clears throat> see, we were imperfect. That's true. Why? Because we'd had this conglomeration, this mixture. We got to the place now we're using our minds, reasoning, instead of just blind faith. See? Apart from the senses. <clears throat> so now this one, this coming one that was spoken of to Eve, was going to be the Redeemer. And we're going to bring us back to the perfection of the Word of God again. That would make a way, would bridge the way. Then the prophet got in the spirit and cried out, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He said, I know that somebody is there. And the last days he'll stand upon the earth. And though after skin worms destroyed this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. <clears throat> so he knew that even though man dies, and there's no apparent resurrection, there's no hope, not like the tree now. Every year he goes through the cycles. Everything is great. But for thousands of years, man has gone to his grave rotted, and there's no evidence, there's no sign, there's nothing. But he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. In the latter days will stand upon the earth. And he said, that's when you're going to see the thing corrected. And remember, Jesus was the only one who lived that word by consummate faith. He had a perfect faith. You couldn't change him. You couldn't... Turn him for one moment. <clears throat> now, Job being a prophet, the secrets of God are known to the prophet. He spoke the word, and when he spoke the word that God showed him, it became material, for it was a spoken word. And in its season, it happened just exactly that way. So we know that Job rose in the first resurrection. Christ was born. The Redeemer, could, the Redeemer one could stand between the living and the dead and bridge the way and brought the resurrection. Exactly. Why? It was the Word of God, certainly. See, there again you see nothing but the Word fulfilled. This should jar people's minds to realize if we could only get back to the truly revealed Word, not by Greek science and not language and this and that, but by the way that God does it, which is by a prophet who is vindicated, then you're somewhere. But you can't tell the church that. Oh, well, we already got it. Oh, yeah, we got better this. We know this. And look at the numbers we're getting in. Millions now living will never die. Hey, we just win the world to God. That takes care of everything. And they're going to be thinking that when the Antichrist takes over. Then when the props are pulled, the foolish virgins, they're going to tear their hair. They're going to be destroyed because the church is purged. And the rest of the, the devil's crowd will stand back. Hey, this is great. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't want to be around here. <clears throat> I want to be around here. Now, Christ was born, that Redeemer. He was the Word of God. Now, he spoke the Word, and the Word was a seed, and it matured in its seeds. And that's Jobius. He's talking about prophecy. And every seed of God correctly placed, but not correctly placed, it won't mature. Did it die with Cain and the Cainites? Absolutely. See, Job grows with Jesus. Now, what if God would send a me his message by an angel to Mary and said, Hail Mary, blessed art thou amongst women. You're going to have a baby knowing no man. She said, Now, wait a minute here. Let me take you down to the laboratory and you tell me. Let the doctor prove to me just how I'm going to do this. <clears throat> and I'll believe you. Never would have happened. What, she, what did she come to? The womb of her heart, the womb that her spirit was in. Your womb of your spirit is your mind. Your mind is a channel. You've got five senses that control the body. You've got five senses that control the soul, conscience, and so forth. Now the body, there's see taste, feel, smell here. But there's only one channel to the inside of that soul. Show that you are a seed. Your soul, you are body, soul, and spirit. Then the one channel or avenue, one way into that, your own free moral agency, that is you can receive or reject, <clears throat> do whatever you want to. <clears throat> a choice. Now, let's understand that. Brother Branham is correct from the word go. There is a choice. I don't care if the choice lies with the Son of God, tremendous, or lies with the devil, the serpent seed. There's a choice involved. But the point is this. What seed you are will determine your choice. And the placing of God's plan in those seeds, whether it's wise or foolish virgin, also determines. But remember, the determination, even then, is based upon the plan that God has for you, and you will gravitate toward it. You cannot help it. You cannot help it. There's no way or there'd be no plan of God ever consummated. It wouldn't work. Your scripture is too final in that respect. Therefore, Eve was on the same basis. She could take God's word and say, God said not to do it, so get away from here. <clears throat> that would have been all right. But instead of that, she tried to hybridize with Satan's lie and brought death to her. And when it came to Mary, it was different. But when it came to Mary, it was different. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. How's it going to be? That doesn't matter how it's going to be. You spoke it. It's the word of God. I receive it. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me even as thy word. There it was settled. <clears throat> and she was all right then. Now, let's get down to nitty gritty. <clears throat> Brother Branham is preaching about himself. The word angel is angelos, which is messenger. So Brother Branham comes here as the messenger of God to the bride. Now, what's the bride going to do? Is she going to believe the vindication? Does she say, hey, that's scripture? <clears throat> or is she going to turn it down? There is no way the bride can turn it down because the body of God, Christ, has only so many members, not one less, not one more, and everyone is word. Amen. Everyone has the same life and <clears throat> gravitates to the head because he is the head. So therefore, he is telling you here, you have a choice. And I'm standing here, said William Branham, and I will know the choice that you're making. When I speak to women with short hair and their slacks and their shorts and all these things, they titter, 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 and think it's a great joke and speak in tongues and flusy themselves across the platform, lead the song service, become preacher's wives, like, uh, like Baker, Jim Baker, and his wonderful wife. Oh, boy, one look at her on the screen, and I said, merciful heavens, who is this thing anyway? <laughs> I never saw anything in my life. Now, look, at ugly is ugly. And you, you, you don't fight God on, the, on, a, on being ugly because Jesus had no looks according to what the Scripture says. But you saw how she acted. Short hair, pancake, pancake. <laughs> That's a mild expression. <clears throat> Somebody took a trout, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Did you know that she looked pretty good when they took all the junk off her face? I could understand that. Whew, man. Boy, when you get furrows made with goo gob <clears throat> and think you're beautiful, your ears hanging down like with cowbells, forget it. You know, you, you, hey, look. The seed of God zero in 
on their life. See, she brought forth the germ of life that was the word of God made manifest in the form of a man. Now, Brother Branham said, the church cannot bring him forth. It's only a bride can do it. See? Because that bride is a virgin of the word. And through the death of that just one paid the debt of every one of us that's unjust. And by accepting that, his word brings life and brings Christ back in us because Christ is the word, the spoken word, and it'll mature if you can receive it. See, that's the only, the only thing right there. Let the sun and the rain come. You that's sick, accept it, believe it. It's got to mature. Come forth in this season. It's got to. Now, Brother Branham is hitting he healing here. <clears throat> but, but actually, I, I, that, that to me is majoring on a minor, and Brother Branham never majored on a minor. He majored on the major. And the major thing is when he's talking about Christ, here bringing us back, that perfect one, bringing us back, the peripheral is the healing, but this is the main thing because these bodies will get sick again and die. And if they don't get sick, they're going to die anyway. Now the thing is this, healing isn't going to bring you back. <clears throat> There's going to be life in the water that fell upon that germ that's in your soul, and your soul is a germ from God, an attribute. Call it what you want. It's a gene, <coughs> seed. And that's been watered and has been brought to life and is brought into unity with him. And that's why we take the word. See? Now, so this word comes to the bride. Not what she will do, but will be done for her and to her as she takes that seed word that must come forth. Now, Brother Bran is preaching that seed word. And remember, he's risen with healing in his wings. And healing is a type of the resurrection. Every single thing he's talking about here is pointing to the fact, you listen to me and don't doubt. And if you don't doubt, you've got past your senses. And if you've got past your senses, you're back to original. You're the bride that he's coming for. <clears throat> remember, he preached on perfect faith. The perfect revelation. That's it. Now, all of us believe that we're in the end time, see? Any man that's intelligent, I believe, if he'd look around and see, it shows this thing can't go on much longer. Now, hey, that's a long time ago, 62. Man, 31 years later, 50%. I want about 15 minutes now to show you what I mean. Anyone knows that something's got to happen. All Scripture points to it. <clears throat> now, we're going to stop right here because that's a good place to stop because he said it's the end time. And uh, so that's where we're at. And we're coming along pretty good. We should finish not too long a time. <clears throat> All right. So you understand now what we're looking at here is a con continuation of Brother Bran is preaching spoken word is original seed, and he's dealing with the seed in this very hour that has been 100% restored. And if there is a people then that have got that restored word, and they themselves are in perfect unity with it, even though their bodies are in this shape, they are now fortunate to the extent they can go right to the tree of life, which is here now, has been visibly vindicated to be so, washing their garments, <clears throat> ready to see the dead rise, ready to be changed, ready to go to the marriage supper. In other words, the first part of 1 Thessalonians 4.16 has already transpired. The shout, the effects of the shout are now in process, perfecting in us. They without us cannot be made perfect. Bring them up. That's the voice. The next thing is the trumpet, the gathering to the wedding supper. So, all right, we are now phased into it. The bride is in continuity to the marriage supper, time into eternity, further sanctification, all the grace of God being revealed, all of these things before us, all because God sent a vindicated prophet, and we, bride, receive it. We don't do one thing with it or about it. We believe. Then will come whatever doing is requisite. And what our brother Brown is saying you're doing was just live good Christian lives. Well, how good are some Christian lie behind your back, cut your throat, everything else? If that's good Christian living, you can have it. I'd sooner mix with the harlots, the drunkards, and the mafia than to be with a bunch of mealy mouthed people who speak in tongues and claim they're Christians and pull every trick in the book. Don't give me that stuff. I'm not interested. We're not here for self-improvement. Let the world of psychology pull that off. Psychology's fine to a certain degree, 
But Christology is what really counts, the spirit of the living God. <clears throat> the word enlivened was that we believe in. That's what Brother Brandon said, a great paradox is here, but don't let that bother you. Things are not as they seem, right on the road to not recovery, brother, sister, but to resurrection. That's not a recovery. That's a resurrection. Let's rise and be dismayed. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the time we've been able to come together to study your word, to have fellowship, Lord, one with another at this particular time and hour. And we are grateful, Lord, that this is our portion. And our portion, Lord, is of God. We do appreciate it very, very much. We ask you, Lord, to help us to believe in vindication as we never believed in vindication before. Knowing, Lord, that vindication sets the record as to what the Word of God really is. And then, Lord, there's only one thing to do is believe it. And if you have in your heart and mind that we should receive the truth of it, one measure above another, or all measure the same, we know that you'll bring it to pass as we simply believe that this is the truth that has been revealed in this hour. So, Father God, as Brother Brown has said, we're back to perfection. And we appreciate that for him having said it, because he said, they without us cannot be made perfect, and we are now in that special process and that special channel. Help your people tonight, Lord, to receive your truth, even for their body's sake, for their healing thereof. We want to pray again, Lord, for those people who are upon our minds many, many times, sometimes several times per day. <clears throat> we think of Jared there in the hospital, Lord. We ask her to remember him, and especially Marlene, as she wait for him to recover. We're glad for every sign and evidence, Lord, that you would help the boy, because we appreciate the fact that young men can be grow up, Lord, and whether they're born again or not, we know they can full certain, fill certain positions. Live lives which are consistent and right and all. We pray from Lord that he might not miss out on anything. Pray for Brother Leon McCollum departing this world, Lord, even gradually not eating any longer. Pray, my God, the time may be rapid that he departs here to be in that place where Brother Branham spoke of beyond the curtain of time. For others, Lord, who have great needs, we ask it in their hour of, of need, Lord. We know that you are more than the answer, no matter what is in life or in death, here or there. We pray, Lord, their consolation may be in there with great faith and joy and peace in their hearts and mind go on to be where you'd have them to be, where they're looking forward. And bless this church, Lord, we pray that you'll help each and every one here again, as we say, to heal the sick amongst us. There won't be a feeble one here, Lord, but above all, may our healing be of you to the extent we'll serve you better. And that our minds, Lord, may be clear with the word of God, not for argument's sake, but, Lord, for the sake of the truth and then the propagation of in the proper way that you want it to the proper people when you want it, Lord. So we wouldn't cast pearl before swine. We know, Lord, that there is such a thing as a scattering amongst a great crowd. But, Lord, I don't believe you sent anybody there to just give a message of condemnation this hour. The word is there to catch the believer, the, net, the word net to catch the believer, to bring him away. And so, Father God, we believe that as this word came forth, vindicated, it's still in its mighty work and its great wonders. So we appreciate it all and thank you for your presence with and your kindness. And under the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be our power, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you. Amen.